Toastmasters, we are experiencing a decline in membership at present. Our rate has declined. At present, our membership has declined 21% so far this year. How do we stop this list? How do we stop this loss and rebuild our clubs? Simply by embracing the new reality of Zoom and Pathways and entice guests to experience Toastmasters and become new members. Holding open houses is our best bet to grow. So what can we do to make them successful? How can we entice guests to join? Our presenter today, this morning, is Michael Bear, a longtime Toastmaster. He is a three-time District 64 International Speech Contest champion. He has placed second in the 2000 Regional Semifinals and was a 1998 International Speech Contest finalist. He became District 64's second accredited speaker in 2019 and finally, after 23 years, received his Distinguished Toastmaster Award this past fall. Michael is our current District 64 Club Growth Director. Today, he will share with us best practices that will help make our open houses successful by attracting guests and converting them to members. Please help me welcome Michael. Thank you very much, Lloyd, and good morning and welcome everyone. And just to let you know, we are recording this and we will put it up on the D64 Club Growth Director YouTube channel sometime later today or tomorrow, because we wanna make sure that everyone has an opportunity to see this even if they weren't able to come this morning. So when I, when I was asked to speak, I thought, how should I set this up? I wanna talk about open houses, but maybe we need to talk about how not to attract members. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's about the little mistakes that we make that make the difference of having a great open house or not so great open house. So the suggestions that I have today, I've gleaned from experiencing open houses over the years in Toastmasters. So here we go. So let's do a very quick round of introductions. We've got 45 people online, so it's got to be really, really quick. We're going to maybe not necessarily do a round of introductions, but just a couple of minutes. Here's what I'd like to know. Your name, your club or clubs, the last open house you held at your club, how many guests were there, how many members joined as a result. So who'd like to start? Janet, I've got you on the screen. Why don't you start? Mr. To Mr. Speaker, fellow Toastmasters, it was Lions Place. It was about now a year and a half ago. I don't know. We had many Toastmaster guests, but we had three non-Toastmaster guests. And at that time, we didn't have any new members, but we do have three new members now. Okay, Helen. Okay, I'm a member of two clubs. Last open house, I don't think we've ever had one in Headliners, so that's a goal for me. HSC, yes, we had an open house. We had, oh, maybe 10 or 12 people attend, and we had, I think, two or three people signed up, but they are very, very solid members. Very solid. They're on the executive. They're participating every week. Just awesome. One of the best things we did for HSC. Cool. Thank you. Laverne. Hello everybody, I'm Laverne Wichkowski. I belong to about five clubs. Uh, Beauchesier White Shell Officers Club, Virtual and Keystone, I believe. The last open house I held at any of those clubs was in Beauchesier at the end of November and we had Bob Huey attend, accredited speaker. We had about 10 guests in the room because we twinned with Prairie Voices. There were two non, at least two non-Toastmasters that were there. And we're working on one of them to sign. We've sent her the application and the other one is still shopping for a club. Okay, thank you. Who else would like to jump in? Those are the only three people that I unfortunately have on my screen. So who else would like to jump in? I know everybody's saying, wow, whew, he can't call on us because he can't see us. Hi, Michael, I'm Sharon Golan. I'm from Manitoba Telecom, and I believe our last open house was in 2018. <laughs> and we had, I think, one person sign up. Cool. My Thank name you, is Sharon. Sylvia. Anyone else? Sylvia. Yes, my name is Sylvia Nielsen Barkman. I'm a talking book, Steinbeck Professional Development, Toastmasters, and Caroline Club. In November, Time of Professional had an open house, and there were probably, I don't know, close to 10 visitors, but we only had one new member. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else? Hi, Michael. This is, this is Rani from Key Club, and uh, hi, Michael, and the uh, first 
downstairs. We are planning, Key Club is planning to do the open house for every month, third week of uh, Tuesday, early morning. We had an open house there last month and four members uh, attended and they are potential uh, members. I mean, four guest attendants, they are potential members. They are interested to join the Toastmasters because they are too shy to speak. Great, well, thank you very much. Well, in, in, in uh, view of time, I think I'm gonna cut the introductions off, but thank you for those who participated. So we are having some open houses, we are getting some guests. So what are some of the secrets of really having effective open houses and why do we have open houses? Well, for a lot of different reasons. The first one, of course, is to attract new members, to attract guests that we can convert to members. There's another reason we want to showcase our members. And I think this is important because we can show people when we have our open house, the really the effect of Toastmasters that it's had on them and how they've improved their communication and leadership skills. We can showcase the benefits of Toastmasters by doing exactly that. So what about planning for your open house? Benjamin Franklin said, failing to plan is planning to fail. And I think it's really important that if we're planning an open house to really sit down and do a really good job planning. So here's some ideas. Maybe you need to choose a theme. What theme are you going to have for your open house? What are you going to have that's going to attract people to you. It might be around a holiday, it might be around you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Canada Day, whatever, but what's your theme for the meeting? And remember, if you choose a theme for the meeting, you have to wrap your meeting around the theme. How many times have you come to, a, to just an ordinary club meeting? And we have, always have a theme. Do we actually talk about the theme? Do we do things around that theme? Or is it just another thing on the top of the agenda? So you have to have it around the theme. Today's theme for our meeting today, um, we're halfway to distinguish, but it is all right. It is the holiday time. So Laverne encouraged us to wear our fun Christmas shirts. And as Daryl Gervais so eloquently said, a fun Christmas shirt on an ugly, over, uh, on underneath an ugly face, at least for me. But what kind of theme are you choosing? Are you highlighting your club's unique selling points? So what makes your club distinctive? What sets you apart from all of the other Toastmasters clubs? When Key Club had their guest meeting on the 1st of December, Key Club meets on a Tuesday morning at seven o'clock. And one of the things that we always talk about in Key Club is that we're a business club. So when we put the advertising out, we talked about being the premier early morning Toastmasters business club. Why early morning for folks who, look, who are morning people and business, that's our unique selling point. I know when Sylvia did the, uh, the Steinbach Pro Professional Development Club, again, what the theme, what was the unique thing? They brought in a speaker, actually I was the one who spoke, but I talked about some things that small business could do to help drive their business. So have you got a unique selling point? And every club is a little bit different. So I'm going to pick on some clubs. I'm going to pick on ASAP. Yes, I'm going to pick on you. I was a member about 20 years ago. Haven't been back since. Haven't been invited either. But that's another thing. But what's ASAP's unique selling point? ASAP is an advanced club. You have to have at least two pa path, um, two levels in, in a path done. You have to audition for the club or you have to have a, a, the old CC. So what's the unique selling point there? They're looking for Toastmasters who want to take it beyond the normal Toastmaster experience to a higher level. So what unique selling point can you highlight, again, to attract guests and potential members? That's really what people are looking for, answering the why. We want really to appeal to that ideal member of our, to, of our clubs to bring them in. So what's your unique selling point? What makes you different from the other Toastmasters clubs? And are you selling that? Guest speakers are also a great way to do this. As I say, I've spoken at Steinbach, and I know Laverne mentioned that uh, Bob Huey was their guest speaker at their last uh, at their last event. They also had another open house earlier this year, and they phoned the speakers bureau. And yes, the district has a speakers bureau that can help you bring in guest speakers. You just have to go to uh, speakers bureau at uh, district64.ca. We can help you. We brought in Tom Island. Did anybody here watch The Price is Right yesterday? 
Again, I can only see four of you, so please, no spoiler alert. Tom Island, who was their guest speaker, was a contestant on The Price is Right, and I haven't seen it, so don't put in the chat what he won, because I'm going to watch him a little bit later. But Tom is a friend of mine. He's an accredited speaker, and he is a premier expert on autism. He is autistic, and he's got a tremendous story. And he was one of those, he was a guest speaker for Bosinger. So when you get a guest speaker, again, you can attract people who maybe you know wouldn't normally attract again just to get that hook to bring them in i think planning the meeting in great detail is very important as well how many times you know at the end of the meeting we sit down and say okay let's plan for next meeting who's going to be the toastmaster who's going to do a speech who's going to be the evaluator who's going to do this who's going to do that i think you really have to plan this well in advance you have to have everybody's role laid out people need to understand what they have to do People need to understand that they've got to be there. You got to get the roles filled. Ideally, two speakers. You want to have a speaker who's relatively new, a rookie, and you want to have one of your more experienced speakers. Why? Because it's the contrast. And in the evaluation, you can bring that out. You say, oh, Michael Bear, our first speaker, he did a great job. Michael's only been a member for a couple of months. The second speaker is Laverne Wojciechowski. Laverne's been a longtime Toastmaster for 10 years. And people right away can see, wow, what a difference it makes. What a difference in speaking. And it really enhances that. If we put our premier speakers on, it's going to scare people away. Because if people are coming to us to, to learn and how to get the experience to speak in front of an audience, and we only show them our best speakers, they're going to say, you know what, I'm, I'm not there. I am not there. This is not for me. So two speakers if possible, that rookie and the experienced speaker. Have a planning meeting for your open house. The key club for our last open house, we had two Sunday morning meetings for an hour planning the open house just to make sure we had the I's dotted and the T's crossed. Everybody understood their role and everybody understood how every role is important, believe it or not, especially timing. We made sure that the night before that everybody was going to show up. This is really key and critical. Again, you don't want to have a hole in the meeting for the for a for a for a guest meeting. It just doesn't look professional. We want to make sure that the guests that you've invited are coming. So the idea is to call them and remind them of the meeting that it's the next day. It's also important, I think, that when you have the meeting to have an agenda and to have a branded agenda. I don't know how many guest meetings I've gone to where it's just a piece of paper with the agenda, but you wanna have a nice branded agenda, look something like this, Key Club Toastmasters, you've got everything there. It's beautifully laid out, people get it. They've got the, uh, they've got the Zoom links for meetings. And you just wanna make sure they have that agenda. So um, have a planning meeting. So. Again, some more planning, invite your area and division director to your meeting so that they can bring greetings from the district. And I think that's another key and important thing. You might wanna have a chat with them as well to see what they're going to talk about just or subtly mention the sort of things that they want you to do. Again, you want them to fit into the meeting. If you're going to do a sales pitch, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, you don't necessarily want them to do that, especially if they're speaking at the beginning of the meeting, because you want to make sure that sort of a thing comes at the end. But invite your area and division director. There are also great general evaluators for your meeting to give you insights of what we're doing. Create a PDF version of the agenda so that it's easy to send out. And when you send the PDF version out to members and to potential guests that are coming, when they open it up, it's, it's formatted properly. You don't have to worry about things getting mixed up and bits and bytes and things not all looking nice and pretty, but send that PDF version of the agenda. The other big advantage of that is put a copy in the chat for guests so that when guests come, maybe unexpectedly, you can say, you know what, we have an agenda for our meeting, go into chat, download it, and they have the agenda in their hand. And that's a great hit for every meeting. Put your agenda in the chat. It just makes it better for guests and for members as well that we're not now fumbling with papers. I think that part of every agenda at an open house 
is you've got to do a Toastmasters pitch. You've got to turn into salespeople. And you have to think about what does that pitch look like? What does that pitch sound like? And you've got to leave, I think, time in your agenda for that pitch to happen. You also have to ask guests to join. How many times have I gone to meetings over the years and there's guests at the meetings and they hope, oh, we'd love to see you again. Or will you be here next week? Why not say, we'd love you to join? We'd love you to join. And then put an application form in the chat that they can download. So it's right there for them. That chat on Zoom is a very, very, very handy feature for us to use. So at the open house, make sure that we greet guests in a friendly manner. I've seen open houses where guests have come in and members are sitting around and chatting. And again, we're in a Zoom environment. So this, this gets challenging, but we want to make sure we greet them. We send them messages uh, via the chat as well. Make sure that we introduce them around. And when we are meeting in person, introduce them to members, especially the president. Because you know what? We'd like you to introduce you to the president of our club. And they go, wow, I'm going to meet the top dog. Yes, it makes a difference. Ask questions to get them talking. Why? Because we want to determine why they came. And if we understand the why, then it's very easy to, to show them how the Toastmasters process will work for them and will help them meet their needs. It'll also make them feel very welcome just to find out the why. So let's get, the, instead of us talking about Toastmasters, get them talking about themselves because they will tell us what we need to know to bring them in and engage them as guests. And that sales pitch again, part of an agenda item on your, on your agenda. And we want you to tailor the pitch to answer the guest's question of why am I here? So what does the sales pitch look like? Well, let me show you what we did at Key Club and we do this at Keystone Speakers as well, the two clubs that I belong to. So we scheduled about five minutes for this in the meeting. We say, welcome to Key Club Toastmasters. What is Toastmasters? Toastmasters International is the world leader in communication and leadership development of 358,000 members and 15,700 clubs in 142 countries. Our mission is to empower individuals to become more effective communicators and leaders. Our club mission is to provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Key Club was chartered in 1971. You know, uh, hint, our 40th is in May. Stay tuned. Our focus is mainly business-related skills. We meet weekly via Zoom, and we have a dynamic personal and professional development program. So as, one of, as, a, as a morning business-related club, how can we help you in business? Well, we have, an edu we have a Pathways educational program that has 11 key paths that will make you a better leader and a better communicator, both personally and in business. So what's part of your challenge in business? Is part of your issues uh, coaching and coaching your staff and your employees for, for, better, uh, for, for better results? Are you perhaps having problem with doing presentations uh, to customers and clients? Uh, do you want to be able to develop stronger and more effective teams that will really drive innovation? Do you want to develop yourself more as a leader? We have a path for those things and many more. So what are the learning opportunities we have here at Key Club? We have the opportunity to practice public speaking skills. You have the opportunity to do impromptu speeches, to lead and organize meetings, and to do work-related presentations. So if you have a presentation that you're gonna do at work and you wanna try it out here, bring it here. We'll help you fine tune it and develop it. Some more learning opportunities. You know, really it's all about experiential learning. The only way to become a good leader and the only way to become an effective communicator is to practice on a self-paced program at your own speed. You get professional feedback from our members and personal mentoring. There's all kinds of leadership opportunities for you within the club. 
as well as within the district as well. And our clubs are organized into areas and you could be an area director who's responsible for overseeing clubs, or you could become a division director, which is to develop, to overlook a, series, a number of areas. So higher in the hierarchy or even district or you know, district officer as well. So some of the benefits of Key Club, dynamic meetings, meetings currently held on Zoom, an accountability framework to track success, mentoring and coaching, opportunity to practice at every meeting. Practice is not limited to the formal program. If you're doing something at work and you want the feedback, bring it here. We will help you do that. We do fun social events during the year. <coughs> significant others just to have a little bit of fun as well. So we're not just Toastmasters in business, but we're about some fun as well. And we really encourage you. So does anyone have any questions? So we pause, we take questions, and here it comes. So the key club investment, what does this really cost? Nothing. There is no cost. It's all about your investment in your future. The investment is $100 Canadian every six months, plus a one-time $30 registration fee. But... If you join today, only $60 for the first three months, no one-time fee, and the application form is in the chat. So that's our sales pitch that we do at Key Club. We have a similar one that we do at Keystone Speakers. So are you doing a formal sales pitch outlining the advantages of Toastmasters, taking that the pathways, listening to what your members are saying, getting that why, and then tailoring the paths that you're going to highlight to help meet their specific skills. This is a huge way of, again, answering their why and getting them to write the check. So the application form. So we put the application form in the chat, and I just wanted to share this. We've slightly modified it, and I don't have TI's permission, but it's better to ask for forgiveness sometimes than permission, especially in a Zoom world. How do we get the cash? How do we get the app? So you can see here, email the registration form to bayerfamily at shaw.ca because Barbara is the vice president of membership. So she does all of that registration stuff. E-transfer the money to Dennis Davily at mymts.net. Dennis is our treasurer. So Dennis grabs the cash and pays the TI fees. So we put the application form right in the chat with instructions on how to get it back to us. This is very helpful again in follow-up and making sure that stuff that we get, we, we, we process those applications and we get people interested. We want to give them the opportunity to join at the meeting. So we strongly recommend you do this. So that's what we do in terms of a sales pitch. So we have to ask, are you doing a sales pitch in your guest meeting where you're very specifically asking, showing the benefits and asking people to join? Because really the bottom line is if we don't ask for the sale, we don't get the sale. And ladies and gentlemen, we are in sales when we have open houses. So what about marketing your open house? Marketing really is the key to drawing in guests to open houses. The better the campaign, the better the results. It's just that simple. The longer the campaign, the better the results. If you publish your open house on Friday morning, hoping to attract guests for Tuesday morning, you're not going to be as successful as if you had a longer lead time. It's really important to do that. Some people say, well, you know, but we do a lot of marketing. Is that going to bug people? We all watch TV. How many times have you seen the same commercial over and over and over and over again, right? It's all about getting people interested and catching people's attention. So marketing campaigns are important. We need to use social media effectively. We had an opportunity to listen to Brittany Miller, who is absolutely brilliant on Instagram and Facebook. We're going to talk about LinkedIn and websites this coming week. Uh, D64 Club Growth Director on YouTube. The videos will all be there if you couldn't come or you can't come. But we need to use social media effectively. So the question I have to ask, do you have a, face, a club Facebook page? If you don't, I have to ask, why not? Now, here's the trick with, with, with any kind of social media, whether it's uh, Facebook or whether it's a LinkedIn page as well, is you have to use social media effectively. If you open a Facebook page or a LinkedIn page and all you ever do 
is post your ads for open houses or whatever, you're not going to be very, you're not going to be as successful as you hoped. Because social media is about giving people things that are important to them and valuable to them, and then occasionally doing a pitch. And the key with social media is to constantly post. And what we mean constantly or consistently perhaps is a better word, is you have to post consistently. So maybe uh, every week after your club meeting, you post about how great the club meeting was, that so-and-so did this. If you maybe can capture, you know, a, a, a little, a short, short piece of video, perhaps someone is, you know, telling a, you know, a, a humor, telling a joke or whatever, those little bits and pieces, but those things are important. And then occasionally posting your sales pitch for, for open houses, that's when you start to become effective. The other thing about Facebook and LinkedIn as well is if you do have a club Facebook page and it shows up on your feed, are you sharing this to your network? And are your club members a member of the page and are they sharing this through their network? That is really key and critical for effective social media marketing. You just can't open a page and put it up because probably no one is going to see it. So you have to effectively manage your social media. Come to our social media workshops. You'll learn a lot more about that. Instagram is very interesting. And if you, when you listen to Brittany, you'll find out that Instagram, and it's interesting because Instagram, the demographic is, is that 18 to 23. Facebook is that 23 to 40. But if you're looking for Instagram, a big difference between Instagram and Facebook, Instagram is about images and videos. And I'm not an Instagram guy uh, whatsoever. I've just recently actually registered on Instagram, but Instagram is about a lot of videos and pictures. So if you don't have videos or interesting pictures, again, you're not going to rate very highly. And again, to attract followers. The idea there too is give pe a people a reason to come, not just an advertising pitch. Creating posters is important as well. And if you want to know how to create really, really effective posters, Cheryl Rose was brilliant at the fall rally. She did a fabulous presentation on how to create effective posters for your club to help advertise. We've got some examples for you here. Here's Tom Island. Again, please do not put in the chat what he won yesterday at Price is Right. I'm going to watch it later tonight. Tom is a great guy. This is a fabulous poster that, uh, that was created by Beau following the, the directions that Cheryl gave us. But really highlighting Tom, you can see there, your eye goes right to that picture that he's holding with his book. Uh, you've got the Zoom link, you've got the date that pops out on you, come to life during a pandemic, a great example of a poster. Here's an example of a poster that Steinbeck Professional Development used, uh, where I was the guest speaker. And again, you can see there's a lot of a lot of information and a lot of writing here. Uh, go to Cheryl Rush. Go to the go to see what Cheryl Rush did at the fall rally. I know we recorded it. Take her advice. Create some posters. Now, here's one thing: when you create a poster and you you post it online, there's a couple of things you have to remember. Again, to be effective in your social media marketing, generally when you do this, you're converting your poster to a PDF or to a JPEG. So an image file, the links don't work because it's an image file. Sometimes you can't even copy the link to paste it into your browser. So if all you have is that image and people have that long string of letters and numbers and slashes and colons and all the rest and dots and all the rest of that stuff, are, you are they really going to be patient enough to type that in error free? So here's what it is put the live link in your post so that they can go and they can click on that so they can come to the meeting or they can click on the copy that put it into their calendar so that they remember it's easy make it easy for people to get to the meeting so put the live link in your post i don't know how many posts i see with links and images that i that i, that I have to type these things out laboriously make it easy 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 for your potential guests. And again, share the posts on your page, share the posts through your network, put it out as much as you can because you've got to get it out there and you've got to be active. Social media is not passive marketing, believe it or not. You've got to work at it a little bit. 
talked about that already. Okay, local newspapers, uh, especially in smaller communities, can be very, very effective uh, to bring to bring uh, attention. Uh, usually, they're looking for content. Uh, local newspapers are also a great way to get articles printed. And I know uh, I have a cottage near Lac de Bonnie, and I was getting my tires changed, and I picked up the local Lac de Bonnie paper, and I said, "I know that person," and there it is, front page, full cover about Laverne Wojcikowski becoming the district director for Toastmasters. So. Use your newspapers where you can, especially in small communities, very, very effective. The other thing with open houses, ask people to attend. You've got to simply talk to people and ask them to attend. Some of us find that hard to do, but if we don't do that, how successful are we going to be? For those of you that remember uh, Warren Piggott, a former member, this guy was a member magnet. He would show up at meetings with the grocery clerk from the night before at Superstore, because he said, have you heard about Toastmasters? No, oh, come on to a meeting with me. And he would bring people, it was amazing. If you ask, people will come. But if we don't ask, we automatically get the no. I think the other really important thing of the, about open houses is follow up. And are we really, you know, we, we do a lot of work planning meetings. We do a lot of work having the meetings. And then where do we fall down? We fall down at the back end when we don't do follow-up. So here's some ideas what we need to do. Send a thank you note in the mail ask, and ask them to join. You know, actually physically write it out, put a stamp on it, pop it in the mailbox. What a difference when you get a letter in the mail, someone's handwritten, than when you get an email. However, an email is very effective right after the meeting to say thank you very much for coming. We, we, we really would love to have you as a member. You would, really, you would really enhance our club, use some really nice words, send them an email as well. Call the person to ask if they have any questions. And then again, to ask them to join and to come back. You know, we, we sometimes don't wanna do that, pick up the phone and call. And yet in meetings, we bemoan the fact that we have to meet by Zoom because of COVID and wow, we can't wait to get back to that person-to-person -person contact. Well, one of the ways to have that person-to-person -person contact today is to get on the phone and talk to people. So it's really important that we do this. We painfully learned the importance of these lessons at Key Club last year. Um, what happened was that one of our members brought in a guest, very engaging. Uh, she had been in, and she was a guest probably for four or five weeks. And we were talking about, you know, the struggles we were having with membership and everything else. And then she said to us, can I make a statement? And we said, absolutely. She said, okay. She said, you know, I belong to BNI for people who don't know what BNI is, it stands for business networking something, I don't know what the I stands for, but basically it's a leads club and there's chapters all over, you belong to a chapter, you meet once a week, you bring business leads in for other members, there's only one person in every, in every sector so that there's not three real estate agents and two lawyers, there's one real estate agent, one lawyer, et cetera, et cetera. And she said, I was invited to a BNI. She said, I went, I did not want to go. She said, I really didn't want to go. The BNI membership is about $500 a year. I think it's somewhere around there. So I really didn't want to go. She said, but they bugged me. I said, all right. I, I, so I went to a meeting. She says, and within the first week, the president called me, the vice president called me. She said, and a week later, two weeks later, I wrote a check and I've been going to BNI for a couple of years. She said, I've been coming here for five weeks. No one's asked me that and no one's called me. And we all looked around, very embarrassed. It's so key and critical. It's the follow-up that counts. That's what makes the difference and that's what brings people in because it's that contact that makes a difference. If they hesitate when you ask them to join, say, you know what? You don't have to make a decision today, but we would love to have you at the next meeting. We'd love to have a role. Perhaps could you just tell a, a joke or give us, a, give us an inspirational quote to launch us off? Again, to get them involved to say, hey, you're going to make a valuable contribution. What a difference that makes. After the next meetings, again, do this. go back to step one and repeat until they finally say yes. Um, so the biggest reasons people don't come, they're not asked to join. That follow-up is missing, and I can't overemphasize this. If they didn't join, they're not that interested. Have you got them on a mailing list? 
to, for future open houses? Because people's circumstances change. So you just never know that someone's come to an open house, you've done the follow-up, you've done all the right stuff. They decide not to come and six months later you invite them and they decide to join. So again, are we, are we keeping in contact with them from time to time? You know, sometimes people don't, people, people don't join, why? Because we didn't discover the why. We need to understand what brings them to Toastmasters, not why we want them to join Toastmasters. And if we can answer their why, that makes the difference. You know, we recruited a member in Sydney, Australia, because she wanted a club that's focused on the accredited speakers. That was her why she wanted to join, because she wants the accredited speaker. So are we answering people's why? Oh, we pushed your resins. Oh, dang, you know, they spell, it's, it's not improperly spelt, but it's just the wrong word. We pushed our reasons they should join, not their reasons. So why it's all about them. And the other thing that we really have to remember about open houses and any kind of a recruitment strategy that we have and that we use, we're not going to sign them all. We're not going to get everybody. Sometimes we do everything right and we go months before we, we sign and all of a sudden people just start to join. You can't win them all, but if we try, we will grow and we will win most of them. So I've been talking for almost 40 minutes. Does anyone here have any questions for me about open houses or anything that I've talked about? Social media, marketing, follow-up. Michael Laverne. Go ahead. Here. One thing I think you need to also mention is if we're going to contact them after the meeting, we have to be collecting their information while they're at the meeting. And we have a form that we pass out to the people or we email to them now to make sure we get all their contact information so that we can do the follow up. You're, you're, you know what, Laverne, you're absolutely right. And oops, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I can to take that to the next step, and this is something Gerald Allen told me a while ago. So, Gerald, if you're on the phone, I have not forgotten. What happens sometimes is what they do is they give us their business contact stuff, but it's important to get their home contact stuff, especially if they belong to a corporate club, because that's part of the issue now with corporate clubs. All of the phone numbers are extensions that aren't working or they're working, but they're not at their extensions. So I think it's important to, could, do we have, do we have not only a work contact, but a home contact so we can get a hold of them. So an excellent suggestion, Laverne, thank you. Any other questions or ideas of what we can do to really drive our open houses to attract members? Well, I had a question slash comment. Go ahead. Uh, just, uh, just related to contacting people. I think it's really important to know how they want to be contacted because not everyone's gonna respond well to a phone call. So I think getting that information along with their contact information of how they would like to be contacted and then try to feed everything in try to get as much uh, of our information into them. So if you have a Facebook page, make sure they know about the Facebook page and join your Facebook page after the meeting, et cetera, and try to find every way that you can to communicate with them and figure out how they want to be communicated with. Some people maybe will, maybe will respond really well to a phone call, but other people are just going to prefer uh, a Facebook messenger message or a text message or a email, et cetera. And they just, just with respect to that, just wanted to say that. No, Jules, you, you make it. You make an excellent point. Maybe we need to figure out a way to to create a uh, a, a virtual guest book where we can capture that information. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let me think about Mike. This. Mike. Yes. Hi. Uh, somebody gave a speech. Maybe it was that Cheryl Roche uh, talk a few months ago. I'm not sure where they talked about not using the term open house, but using some other term. Do you remember what that was? Uh, no. Yeah. I could check my notes later. Okay. We, we okay. were calling it a guest night in Beaujolais instead of an open house. Okay. Uh, wasn't yes. that something like um, opportunity night or something like that? 
I'll look it up. <laughs> okay. I just remember that whoever it was said, don't say open house. That's all. Yes. Okay. All right. That's, that's a good yeah. point, Bev. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and Mike, um, I, I, I have uh, 24 years of experience doing paper-based contacts with guests and I'm completely at a loss now how to do this on Zoom when, you know, at the end of the meeting, everything vanishes. Everything that was in the, the chat just vanishes. I used to have this fantastic little form, just a half sheet, you know, your name, your phone number, your email, and, and I would have two questions. One, what do you, how did you, how did you find out about our club? And two, what kind of skills do you want to develop? And so I would take that home and within the next couple of days, ideally, usually, I would email that person and say, oh, you want to do this. This is how Toastmasters can help you do that, which is, you know, similar to what you were talking about in your sales pitch. Um, how on earth do you do that? on zoom that's a that's a good question that i don't have an answer to my my sort of my my, my initial gut tells me that maybe we need to develop something like a, a fillable pdf that they can download fill in the information and then send back to us and where we actually have our you know we have a live link on the pdf form that they could that that could happen automatically i don't know if that's if that's creatable uh, to be very honest but that would seem to be a kind of an elegant way of, of, uh, of doing that. But I need to, okay. I need, I need, I need to find a, an IP guru uh, who can help me with that. That would be good. Yeah, because I, I, I agree. And, and I, and I, you know, and I think Bev, I remember filling a form out for you about that 24 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and you joined the club. And here I am today. <laughs> yes. So exactly. I do have a recommendation, Michael, if you'll allow me. Absolutely, David. We have a 10 minute break in our club meeting and I just outright ask our member and our VP of M writes that information down. Okay. How long are your meetings? Uh, an hour and a half. Okay. It's Telkirk. Yeah. But <laughs> ask the member outright. I mean, if we do have an electronic welcome and new guest package for the members and they get that, but always nice to get what their goals are, why they came and an email to follow up with their phone number. And we get that from them during the break. Yeah. And, and I, I, I totally agree. And I, and I think too, you know, why they came, if we can answer the why, that's how we get them to join because we answer that question. <laughs> I have a question about the chat for the agenda or other things. Do you copy and paste them into it or how does that work? Actually, when you go into chat, there's a, a thing there where you click on it and you can upload a form. So you just you just click there and oh. it opens up. You click the form and you say yes and it, and it pops it into the chat. And then uh, you see it in the chat, you click on it, it downloads it and it opens it up. It's very, very, very simple. Oh, wow. Put the form somewhere where you can find it easily. So yeah, usually on you know up on the desktop somewhere, so it's it's easy yeah. Yeah, it's easy yeah. to find, okay. and and it pops right up. And if you use a PDF again, you don't have to worry about formatting. You know that everything's going to look right. Michael, it's Ken Hartz. I uh, I don't know if you covered it, but did you talk about our theme for our guest night? Because I was thinking if we were to. Um, Name it special guest event, a life changing event, or is that too strong? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think it. I don't think it's too strong. Um, I think that, I think that uh, uh, the catchier the name, the more likely people are going to pay attention to it. I'm reading a book called Hook Point: How to Live in a Three Second World. And Hook Point talks about the fact that, you know, in today's world that, you know, especially when we're, when we're looking for things, we have no patience. So if it's not there readily available, you know, we don't want to go doing 15 clicks to find something. Um, if it doesn't grab our attention right away, we'll move on to something else. Uh, you know, I, I think of it as, you know, when you're driving around the city and you see billboards, what billboard is catching your attention in all the billboards that you see? That's that hook point. So, you know, how you set your how you set your meeting up is can you can you can you make that 
that advertising, that marketing piece so attractive that people will, will click on it, at least if nothing else, for more information. And the idea too is to try different things till you find something that works. Don't know if I've answered your question, Ken. No, I, I think so. I, I just thought maybe, you know, it's a hook that can really bring them in. Yeah. But then you have to deliver. You better make sure that meeting does help them. Exactly. You know, one, one of the things, you know, in our social media campaign that, that one, of, you know, and I've been talking about this for a long time, but, you know, for our university and college clubs, when we want to attract that younger demographic. So why, why do kids go to, why do kids go post into secondary school? One of two things to get a job or to, uh, or to get into some kind of a professional program that that's the prerequisite for. So, you know, I, I think, and, and we're still debating this one, I guess, is I think a strong piece of advertising would be something like uh, your transcript gets you the interview, your interview gets you the job, we can help you with the interview. To appeal to, uh, to, to the younger demographic to help them reach some of their goals. And then to use somebody like Richard Durkach, who, uh, is, uh, who got into medical school and, and told me that, you know, the reason he aced the interview is because of Toastmasters. You know, sort of marry. Michael? Yes. Yeah, Michael, I, th I think that uh, if you're, if you have a really targeted message like that, that's excellent. Um, the idea of calling it, uh, calling something a, a life-changing event and um, Janet just posted something there. To me, that just sounds like a scam, and I would never. That would that would just turn me off completely. So you know, something that's more <laughs> realistic, mm -hmm. that'd be fine. In our marketing meeting on um, Monday, Monday, Tuesday night, I don't even went there. I don't even know what day it is anymore. But in our marketing meeting that we had this week. Um, uh, you know, one of the one of the one of the participants, uh, Lane, was telling us about a, a local uh, a local uh, oldies radio station that that uh, that appeals to the older crowd, and he was talking in terms of Elmwood seniors. So I'm thinking, and the advertising is really cheap. So for something like that, is you know, we've we've had a lot of members that have that have come and gone over the years. So even an advertising campaign was, you know, uh, it's time to come home to Toastmasters. Um, for the older crowd, um, do you want to be able to tell, you know, do you want to be funnier for your grandkids? You know, just, again, something like that, a benefit that they can, you know, something that just sort of attracts their attention so that we can get them to come to a meeting just to somehow do something a little bit different. So we're, we're looking for ideas too, folks. So, you know, uh, I, am, I am open to absolutely every suggestion because I do not have all the answers and I know that. Uh, and certainly my wife reminds me of that often. So any suggestions that, that you have, uh, we are more than, more than happy to get. So don't hesitate to you know, email me, call me or whatever with any kind of suggestions for, for hook points, marketing ideas or marketing campaigns. We will, be running a, uh, uh, we will be running a social media campaign in the new year uh, to help attract folks. And we're gonna run that across the demographics. Uh, so um, um, that certainly you know, will help. If you're looking for other ideas though, and you've heard me talk about this as well, toastmastersEurope.org and you go to the Moonlit Project and they did a high performance leadership program there on how to attract, um, how to attract millennials and Gen Xers. And there's all kinds of great material, all kinds of great artwork. It's all there. Uh, and uh, you know, if you're looking for things to use as part of advertising campaigns, you might wanna go and look what they have there. There's some tremendous, tremendous stuff that they've developed there. So that's a good source of material if you're looking for, for things to post. Any other questions? It's Michael uh, Chris Damon here. Just a question. You talked about uh, this being up on YouTube and I think, I think the speaker you talked about uh, social media was Ricky Miller. Did I get that right? No, it was Brit uh, Brittany Miller. Brittany. So I just gone on YouTube and, and maybe I'm in the wrong spot, but it's District 64 and sh I should find it there. Uh, District 64 Club Growth Director. It's D64 Club Growth Director. So, so on YouTube, I go D64 Club Growth Director. Yeah. Okay. And this will be up. In, in the next little while as well. Uh, actually, it's up. I put it up last night. Okay. <coughs> okay. 
Super, no, that's what I was wondering. Just wanted to follow up on this. Yeah. A great presentation, Mike. I thought that that overall, I think for all of us to remember the importance of the little things, as you said, and I think also when you're, you had a 40 minute uh, presentation, when you do have an open house to make sure that you, you know, it's, it's concise and, and um, well, organized and ready to present to the, the guests, right? So not, you, we wouldn't be able to go through a 40 minute presentation. So what, you know, whatever it is that, that uh, works uh, for that particular guest, making sure that we follow up. So I think my comments are, my point is good presentation and for all of us to be prepared. Thank you. And yeah, and that, that little Toastmasters pitch, that, that, you know, we do that little Toastmasters pitch in about five minutes. If you would like copies of those slides that you can, you can customize to, for your club, email me, you can go club growth director at district 64.ca, ask me for the slides and I will, I will, I will send you that slide deck that again, you can customize for your own club. And it's just, I'm not going to give you the whole, I mean, if you want the whole slide deck of the entire presentation, you can have that too, but it's just that bit, you know, welcome to key club and the different and uh, the various, uh, the various things where we talk about key club and stuff. So I'd be happy to share those with you as well. So club growth director at district 64.ca. And I will gladly uh, email those to you. Oh. I, am, I am going to quit my share so I can see most of you. <laughs> well, thank you very much for this fabulous uh, presentation, Mike. Uh, I enjoyed it and I believe everybody else did so. Uh, and uh, got a lot of information of what not to do to attract guests. So let's follow this and uh, make sure that our clubs are growing. Uh, we all have the opportunity and we all need new members. So let's work with this and have fun with it. That's the main part. Once again, thank you very much, Mike, for your time. Great job. We really enjoyed this presentation. Thank you very much. And uh, as I say, if I can help you, if you got ideas, send me an email. We're looking for ideas. We have a ton of money to spend. We want to get rid of it before they suck it back. <laughs> All right. Thank you.